Hello, everybody. Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology. I'm Mr. Veach, and I wanted to spend just a few moments of your time going over ways to be successful in my class. Okay. Uh, every single semester, I get asked the same questions. You know, uh, how do I do the paper? What's in the portfolio? How in the world do I study? How big is the midterm? Uh, how much is the final worth? So let's just answer a few of those questions. Uh, first thing portfolio. Let's just go over it. You know, that portfolio is just a way to show me that you actually spent time studying. Um, I have kids turn in three ring, uh, three inch notebooks uh, to me at the end of the semester. Yeah, they're great. I love them. Uh, clearly, some people spend a lot of time on them. Uh, on the same note, I've had people turn in just one of those little bitty spiral notebooks with 80 pages in them, um, and they're equally as good. So uh, in this case, I'm going to say I'm not going to give you a grade based on the size of the notebook you hand me. It's about the quality of the notebook. Uh, does it contain all of the notes that you took while you were studying? Um, does it contain some drawings, some images? Let's face it, anatomy and physiology, uh, it's kind of half an art class where you have to uh, be able to identify certain pieces and parts. You have to be able to know where everything is connected. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking for those two things. I'm also looking for those self-quiz answers that are at the end of every single chapter. Make sure you're completing those. Um, Make sure you do them as you are studying. In my opinion, it makes a whole lot more sense to look at those questions first, then read the chapter looking for those answers. Uh, main reason, you're reading with a purpose. You know what you're looking for. Uh, some of these chapters are huge, and if you have a way to kind of narrow things down, you find out what's important. Okay, so the portfolio, um, it's not based on size. It's based on quality. Uh, honestly, if you do well on the midterm and on the final, it tells me you spent some time studying. Now, when it comes time to studying, what you have to do is set aside some time every single week. You know, uh, if it were me, I would suggest that you set aside an hour and a half uh, every other day of the week, just for anatomy and physiology. Um, I realize some people can't devote that much time, and so, you know what, if you can do one Saturday a week or one Sunday a week, uh, just make sure you're doing this on a weekly basis. Otherwise, you're going to get behind. Midterm's going to hit you, and all of a sudden, you haven't started class. And uh, that makes things tough. Okay? Next thing, the paper. In AMP1, you have to write a paper on uh, disease or disorder of the endocrine system. In AMP2, it's of the respiratory system. Uh, you know, in the past, I've had people hand me papers that are directly on the endocrine or respiratory systems. Um, you know, I don't really want to know about the system itself. I want to know about a disease or a disorder, uh, what it does to the human body, and possible ways of treating that disease or disorder. Uh, traditionally, when it comes to endocrine system, I get a lot of papers on diabetes, and when it comes to the respiratory system, I get a lot of papers on asthma. Um, you know what, if you can find something else, I'd probably really enjoy reading it. So um, Now, those papers need to be about five pages long. Uh, they also have to have citations. Uh, you didn't invent this stuff. You didn't discover it. You had to go out and research. And so what I ask is that you have at least three outside sources uh, that are coming either from a book. I don't mind if they come from the internet. Just realize that uh, a majority of the articles on, let's say, diabetes on the internet, they're all the same article even though they're found in different places. So they need to be unique articles. Um, they have to be placed in a work cited or a bibliography at the end of the paper. Uh, you also have to have in-text citations in the paper because if you're giving me data or if you're telling me about certain proteins that do this or that, uh, once again, you didn't discover it. You're just telling me about it. So make sure you're giving credit where credit is due. Somebody else found that stuff. Um, you know, honestly, I don't care what format you use when you're citing stuff. Um, I know MLA the best. But if you're an APA person or uh, if you're one of those people that know about footnotes, feel free. I'm cool with that. Um, I can figure it out, but you just have to have that stuff. Honestly, if I don't see an in-text citation, that paper that is worth uh, roughly 20% of your grade uh, may go from an A instantly to a C or a D just because you didn't cite your stuff. Next thing, uh, if there is uh, plagiarism, it's a zero. Uh, we don't do plagiarism. You need to come up with your own paper. 
um, but not a big deal. Once again, right around five pages long. Um, I'm not going to count words. Uh, no need to try to cheat me. One inch margins, you know, standard MLA or APA style is what you need to do. So paper, nothing to it. Now, the thing is that paper is due the same time of your dissection. Which leads me to the next thing. Uh, hey, Mr. Veach, do I have to go to the dissection? Uh, the answer is, yeah, you do. It's uh, your lab component. It is worth 20% of your grade as well. Uh, the dissection itself, we do uh, dissect a fetal pig. Um, if you're a little bit of nerve, a little bit nervous, don't worry about it. Um, honestly, people get nervous during those things, and then once you get started. Uh, I would like to think that you're just amazed of how complex and amazing this body is. Um, and if you're wondering why a fetal pig, uh, honestly, uh, pig's anatomy, really, really, really similar to uh, a human's anatomy. Okay, uh, that dissection is going to take about two hours. The date is listed in your syllabus. Um, the one thing I'm going to suggest is don't wear your favorite clothes. Um, and if you have a date afterwards, you might want to take a shower just because, um, well, you're going to stink. Um, sorry, that's just the way that it goes. If something weird comes up and all of a sudden you can't come, uh, let me answer these questions right now. No, I do not have a rescheduled time. Uh, it is that one day. Make sure that you can attend. Now, midterm. The midterm itself is going to be emailed to you. You have to email it back to me, okay? Uh, all I want is the answer sheet. If you can't figure out a way to scan it and email it back, you can hand deliver it to me, all right? Uh, I am located in the library most of the time at Bennett High School. Now, when it comes to the final, it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna hand you the final, or email you the final. You're going to have to, in this case, actually deliver it to me because I'm gonna need that portfolio along with it. Okay, uh, no big deal. Everything's fairly straightforward. Everything is fairly simple. Um, you know what? I love this class. I love the people who are taking the class. Generally speaking, uh, people who take it, they want to do something in the medical field, so they're taking it for real. Um, they spend time. They spend time studying. Um, and that's what I'm going to suggest to you. Just make sure you're spending time studying. Now, last but not least, is going to be um, this semester I'm using a uh, online service called Edmodo which allows me to post all sorts of stuff all of my PowerPoints and whatnot um, it's just like Facebook make sure you uh, join the group make sure you spend some time in it uh, make sure you use all of those cool resources that I have all right if you ever have any questions uh, feel free email me call me and you know what if you can stop by uh, make sure you call first because I do have several classes throughout the day. Uh, but yeah, give me a call, show up, we'll sit down and chat. So um, once again, welcome to the class and I'm sure everything will be fine. Okay guys, let's go through this fairly fast. You're gonna to wanna to go to www.edmodo.com. Once you're there, you've got a couple of options. If you've never used Edmodo before, you're gonna click on I'm a student. If you have used it before, sign in like normal. Uh, so for you newbies, what you need to do is enter in your group code. It's found in your syllabus. You're gonna pick a username. If that username is already selected, you're gonna to have to pick a different one. Uh, the password that's unique to you so please don't lose it. I never see it. Uh, enter in an email. Um, the cool thing about putting in your email is if I ever post something to Edmodo, you'll get a notification that says, hey, Mr. Veach just put in a quiz or an extra credit assignment. Um, you'll have to do a little bit of setup, but it's no big deal. And then for your first name, last name, uh, make sure you use your real first name, your real last name, as it shows up on my uh, roster. That way I know uh, who you are. Once you do that, new students, it's going to take you directly to class. Old students or people who've already used this before, let's just do it this way. And uh, everybody, this is how you will get in the second time. You're going to put in your username or your email, and then your password, and I'm, I'm going and I'm going to go in. Uh, I'm going to click on AMP1. Now, if you already have used Edmodo before, you're going to click on Join right here. 
this is where you'll put your user code. If this is your first time using it, don't worry about clicking on joining, okay? Important stuff right in the middle. Here we can see a very important um, welcome message from me. It's just telling you a little bit about where stuff is. First thing I want to draw your attention to is this folders tab or section. Um, AMP1 and AMP2 have their own folders. The folders contain all of my lectures that I would use in a standard class. Feel free to view them, download them. Um, use them with your book. They're not to be used as a standalone. They're used to be, uh, or supposed to be used as a supplement. Other cool things that I have here are these really nice mini lessons or um, just kind of an animation. This one is uh, really cool. It's about how stuff is transported through a cell. You know, seeing this graphically really, really helps. Um, especially when you're looking at stuff like how muscles work, how um, nerves send messages to one another. So feel free to use these. They're really, really quite useful. Next item, calendar. Uh, the calendar has everything that is due and when it's due for your class. You can see the class starts on the 17th. Uh, very first important thing is I email the midterm out to you on February the 29th. You have to email mail or hand deliver the answer sheet to me by March the 7th, no later than three o'clock. In order to get out of anywhere, just click on home. Now let's just say for an instant that you have something really important. You say, what is my grade? Pow, pow, pow. And then you send it to me. Send. Okay, here's the first problem. Uh, first of all, everybody in class can see it. We don't want that. And so you say to yourself, oh, I meant to email them, not post it. Uh, you can delete your posts. Um, feel free to delete them if you accidentally delete or uh, say something you didn't mean to say. Um, if you have important questions dealing with personal information, email me. Otherwise, if you want to say, hey, did you guys hear about the latest, greatest thing in uh, medical science? You can post it here. Uh, it's just kind of a neat way to uh, interact with some of your classmates. If you miss something, rewind, watch this again. Otherwise, feel free to email or call me and I will walk you through it. Hope this helps.